Okay, so I call this meeting to order for January the 2nd, 2024. Uh, welcome to our inaugural meeting for uh, 2024. The town of Swan River acknowledges that we are situated on Treaty 4 lands, the territories of the Cree, the Soto, Dakota, Lakota, Nakota, and on the homeland of the Red River Métis. Their spiritual and pra practical relationships to the land creates a rich heritage for our learning and our life as a community. We show honor and respect these treaties. Result of the agenda for the January 2, second, or sorry, 2024 regular meeting of council be adopted. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Boychuk. All in favor? It's carried. Result the minutes of the December the 19th, 2023 regular council meeting be approved. Moved by Councillor Bobick, seconded by Councillor Boychuk. All in favor? It's carried. Communications 6.1. Result the letter dated December 22nd, 2023 from the Honorable Tracy Schmidt. Minister of Environment and Climate Change for Manitoba be received. Moved by Councilor Deputy Mayor Morio, seconded by Councilor Medwood. Discussion. All in favor? It's carried. Seven reports, 7.1. Result of the Director of Public Works report be received. Moved by Councilor Bobbick, seconded by Councilor Medwood, discussion. Councilor Medwood. I have a question. It references in the foreman's report that we had two garbage trucks operating over the holidays for the dance beats. Do we actually have two garbage trucks? Yeah, we have a main truck and a backup. So it's the main one, everything was down, and we used the backup one. Okay, and what else does that backup one do? Uh, most of the time it's just there if we need it, because if the main truck goes down, have compaction so then we have to use a loader and dump trucks it gets incredibly slow okay so is this like an older yeah. model that's yeah like we buy the, uh, when we buy a new truck then we get rid of the old truck we always keep two so one's new and one's like it's an old truck but we just need it so that the new truck if we need to do an oil change or if there's a hydraulic leak we can immediately get a new old truck and go so that we're not at the hand of all the garbage. Okay, thank you. Councilor White. And relative to the uh, Dutch Elm disease property owner, the meeting with him, what a wonderful idea. I appreciate that. Have you considered uh, sharing that with the, uh, the Urban Forest Committee? Uh, yeah, I can uh, send out an email. Perfect, thank you very much. Councilor Baldwin. All right. Just I'm wondering what the meeting with Cal Tire and Manitoba Hydro pertain to. Uh, so they have a street light that's in front of their property um, and they want to move it to the north because that's going to be their new driveway. Although they're going to have a proposal to the council instead of moving that street light to add additional lighting to their own buildings. So that'll probably be coming on the next meeting. Okay, thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Other reports, council reports, Councillor Bobbick. Uh, nothing, Your Worship, to report. Thank you. Just have a quiet Christmas and New Year's. I have a little bit to say in member privilege. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Medwood. Mm, well, I was relatively able to get some downtime. December 20th, I attended the MTI Minister's meeting. December 21st was the Minister of Justice meeting. And then I am back into full swing as of tomorrow with the uh, Swan Valley Communities That Care as well as uh, CSWB and the fourth. And yeah, meetings are on the go again. So it was a wonderful break while well, I had it. <laughs> uh, Council White. Yeah, on the uh, December the 20th, we met with MTI Lisa Naylor, the minister, and concerns about our highways or lack of maintenance or encouraging maintenance in other areas. We talked about the contracts, talked about the left turn in front of uh, 
McDonald's, we talked about the roundabout, so <coughs> he'll be following up with us soon. Uh, I think it's a good, healthy discussion, and uh, we'll see where that goes. Then on the 21st, we met with Minister Reed, the Justice Minister, and we looked at uh, the RCP contracts and how they apply to different communities. Uh, we talked uh, briefly about some crime solutions, but uh, the doors are open. We met uh, some of the new players, and they asked us to keep in touch with them. So that was pretty positive, and I enjoyed both uh, ministerial meetings. Okay. Uh, Councillor Boychuk. We have no volume, but you have no report, or? Okay. <clears throat> Okay. We just have some uh, small audio problems there. I think we picked up a little bit there, but, but thank you. Um, Deputy Mayor Morio. Um, not many official meetings um, since our last one, but uh, had the meeting with the Department of Justice that's been previously reported on, and then just the regular uh, background uh, meetings with subcommittees and other uh, business keeping things forward uh, for over the holidays. And that's all. Okay. Uh, not much for myself either, uh, although last Friday, um, uh, CEO Poole and myself and with uh, uh, Deputy Mayor Morio and Councillor uh, uh, Powell, we had a chance to sit down and, and have a meeting with uh, James Wigley from Canadian Mental Health and talking about um, some of the uh, homeless and some of the other issues in town just to kind of like lay out some of the, uh, the uh, understanding of what's happening with some of the agencies in the community so there'll be a little bit more information as, as that comes on. Uh, as it, uh, I guess moves forward, but there's some analysis that the province had made that we were not completely clear about as far as sheltering or warming centers. So um, we just had kind of a, uh, a discussion to uh, see exactly what was going on so that we knew exactly as a council and community what was uh, moving forward. So this it's still quite gray, so there's really not much more to report than that other than uh, being kind of a part of this task force that they uh, that they have created. So, uh, we'll, uh, Councillor Powell is already on that committee or that task force, so I'll be joining them as well. And I invited the Chamber of Commerce as well as other community groups to be part of that uh, discussion as well. And that's it for me. Is the Immigrant Services being considered for that task group? It can be. If, if, if you want, I can add that. Uh, I would ask that. you to consider okay. that. Okay, any, any group, uh, absolutely, I, I totally agree with, so thank you. Okay. If you can actually email that to me and then I'll remember. Thank, thank you. you. All right, uh, sales report. Uh, yeah. I have a written report for council. Um, <clears throat> just a bit of a, a history data on there for a list of all the bylaws that were passed in 2023 and what is on the docket for the beginning of 2024. Uh, a lot of them are, are what we've already been dealing with uh, due to the separating of the structure standards bylaw and the unsightly bylaw. Uh, a good note for the one the council hadn't seen is the rental safety standards bylaw. It was passed six years ago or so, but it was clearly to deal with the problem they were having back then because uh, like the bylaw is a really good idea and we should have it. This was a part of a directive to the employees to start looking at what we do have and how we can enforce it. But it clearly needs an upgrade, but uh, uh, we will be going through that review in 2024. But uh, just to show that you know our employees are looking, and it was the bylaw officer that said, hey, there's a lot of people that are against this bylaw, and it is passed. What can we do about it? So kudos to him. Uh, other than that, I can answer any questions to, to anything else that's going on in, the, in my report. Councilor Madden. You reference repeal of bylaws 1 and 22 slash 2022. What bylaws are those? Uh, oh, 
certain. That's on the on the list. Yes. Uh, that was due to a just a procedural error. I have to look back. But it was it's every bylaw that replaces another one. We have a sentence that repeals the previous bylaw. There was two bylaws that were passed that did not get that sentence, so they were repealed in a bylaw by itself. That's what they were, the actual bylaws of Organizational bylaw and the procedures bylaw. Mm. For the discussion, right? Uh, you reference established Small Valley Fire Board. Have we not already done that? Pardon me, where? Your last point on the bylaws passed in 2023 says established Small Valley Fire Board. Have we not already achieved that? Yeah, I, I'm listing the bylaws that were passed in 2023, so that is, that's a bylaw that is going to be passed. In. So that's, those are the bylaws that we've dealt with. Okay. Okay, for the discussion. All right, moving on then to, uh, where are we here? 8, 8.1. Uh, this is on the item of um, appointing our deputy mayor. Uh, so prior to the uh, resolution, as we do not have, I'm looking for anyone to um, make a, I guess make a motion to appoint or uh, a nominate a, uh, a nominee, Councilor Bobbick. Nominate uh, Councilor Mario, please. Okay, Councilor Mario. I endorse uh, that nomination with enthusiasm. Okay, any other further nominations? Let your name stand. Oh, sorry, you let your name stand. Yes. Okay, uh, any further nominations? one more time any further nominations this nomination is closed <clears throat> resolved that Councilor, Councilor Morio be adopted as or appointed as Deputy Mayor of the Town of Swanner effective January 2nd 2024 through January 7th 2025 moved by Councilor Bobbick seconded by Councilor White further discussion all in favor it's carried Congratulations. <clears throat> Resolve that the 2024 standing committees and other appointments be approved as per Schedule A. Moved by Councilor White, seconded by Councilor Boychuk. Discussion? Councilor Medwin. I have not checked my mailbox, so it might already be sitting there. But if not, can we have those printed off and put in our mailboxes? Because I can't print 11. I don't have 11 by 17 paper at home. Please and thank you. Yep. Okay. For the discussion, all in favor? It's carried. 8.3. Whereas a result of our lawsuit investigation, test labs conducted a met, how do you say it? Metallurgic. Metallurgic study on the structural components of the Credit Union Aquatic Center. And whereas the study confirmed several detrimental corrosion to the metal, metal components on the select hangar supports within the basement level of the mechanical rooms. Therefore, be it resolved that test labs be hired to provide project management services for the complete repair of the pipe hangar issue within the Swan Valley Credit Union Aquatic Center. Moved by Deputy Mayor Morio, seconded by Councilor White. Discussion, Councilor Medwin. Just to clarify, the thirteen thousand one hundred twenty-five dollars that is solely for the hiring of test labs consultation. It is not including any equipment, materials, labor, any of that. That's, That's correct. Yeah. Okay, and have we budgeted for this, or will we be budgeting for we'll this in twenty twenty-four? Yes, if this is passed, it it must go in the budget and we will have the project in the budget as well and the capital. Okay. 
I didn't bring that stuff with me. Uh, yeah, if we if it's we wanted to council wanted to see a review of the project, we could, we have that available. Um, yeah, you can have it out later. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 8.4. Whereas the town of Swan River on December the 5th, 2023 declared that the Swan Valley Folk Festival as a community event and whereas the Manitoba Liquor Commission has determined they require further clarification as to the precise date and time of this community event. Therefore, be it resolved that the Swan Valley Folk Festival being held over the course of two days from May 31st to June the 1st, 2023, and each day running from 10 a.m. to 1 a.m. of the following day be declared a community event. Moved by Councilor White, seconded by Councilor Bovic. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 10.1. Resolve that the accounts as follows be hereby approved for payment. General accounts checks number 31093 to number 31138, totaling $133,620.21 as listed on Schedule A. Payroll accounts checks number 5400 to number 5403, totaling $103,194.77 as listed, last listed on Schedule B. Payroll accounts checks number 5404 to number 5407, totaling $140,012.88 as listed on Schedule C. And direct deposit payments totaling $835 as listed on Schedule D. And direct deposit payments totaling $41,484.87 as listed on Schedule E. Moved by Deputy Mayor Morio, seconded by Councilor Medwood, discussion. Councilor Medwood. With the 31093 for the 16,619.68 for the playground structure, where the playground struck, is it just one? Where is it going? And is it within the budget that was set? Um, this is the grant, the Elks grant and the BSC grant that we were working on, and it's going down into Triangle Park. Okay. It was the purple and gold one that I showed the pictures of. Okay, and that's around. all within the budget allotment? In the grants, yeah. In the grants, yeah. perfect. Um, Go the ahead. 31108, 31120, There are all various expenses for the Swan Valley Fire Department. Is there a reason why the town of Swan River is still paying for the Swan Valley Fire Department? And is our municipal partner also sharing in these costs? Do you want to answer that? Um, these expenses were, were incurred prior to the signing of the agreement. Yeah. So this would be, you see them late. But we, we also do have an agreement with the board that there is operating expenditures that the town will be invoicing the board at the end of the year once they're compiled. Uh, that ended December 31st. So we will show expenses. <coughs> there is an invoice going to the board from when we signed the agreement to December 31st. Okay. Uh, Councilor Bobbitt. I'm understanding that, but I'm just wondering why would you order the new crests prior to that thing? Would you, the crests are for the new fire board, I would imagine. I, would, I don't know the answer to the, that. The, the, the fire much. board still, uh, like the new entity, has started prior to January the 1st. Okay, so well, that, what I'm getting at is that it did the fire board approve my crests? Or is it through this town of Fort Riverstone? Through that, that again, it'll be expensed in. It'll all kind of catch itself up in 2024. Okay. Yeah, the understanding we knew that there would be a lengthy transition period. Both municipalities understood that that there was going to be. It wasn't going to be immediate when we signed it. They're just ready to go. It, it, it's not that they're they're still working on a lot of administration, payroll, you name it. Yeah. So, so a lot of this transitional stuff, it'll clear itself up in 2024, 
any expenses that the town has incurred will be paid back uh, during in 2024. Um, I think you want to go again? Yes. Uh, 31122, the Swan Valley Chamber of Commerce, did they submit their 2022 financials prior to receiving their grant as per our bylaw? Yes. Council Bobbitt? I, I'm still on the fire board there. So in the future of 2024, we won't be seeing these purchases on there. It'll be going through the fire board and right. coming here. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. This is just a transition yeah. where there'll be an accounting from that's when right. the signing to the end of the year um, until the, the board has yeah. goes through all the, the challenges of setting up a whole new incorporated business. Okay, yeah, perfect. Thank you. Further discussion? Just Go one ahead. more. On the direct deposits payments, the two for Minister of Finance, uh, one for the firefighting equipment, debit here, that one doesn't roll off my tongue well, and the loader backhoe, are these annual ones? Or no, are they the loader backhoe is that. Annual, okay, and is the other one an annual one? I don't remember seeing it. Well, annual until the debenture is paid off for the firefighting equipment. I can't remember when that. CFO Gadeda, can you answer that? Yes, all debenture payments are annual. Okay, and we continue to own that one for the firefighting, even with the change to the Swan Valley? In, until the debt is paid. Okay. Until the debt is paid, yes. That's all I wanted to clarify. Thank you. Okay, for the discussion, all in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 10.2. Result of the financial statements for the 11 months ending November the 30th, 2023, be adopted as received. Moved by Councilor Medwood, seconded by Deputy Mayor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 10.3. Whereas sections 326 of the Municipal Act provides that a municipality may impose supplementary taxes and subsections 306 provide that a municipality may cancel and reduce taxes upon receipt of assessment alterations for the Manitoba Central Services. Therefore, be it resolved that the assessment alterations provided by Manitoba Assessment Services on December the 21st, 2023, be made to the 2024 property tax roll with the resulting increase of $14.49 and the resulting reduction of $3.12. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Deputy Mayor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 11, 11.1. Resolved the bylaw 6, 2023, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River to maintain property and to regulate nu nuisances, derelict, abandoned, and unsightly property are read a third time and passed. Moved by Councilor Deputy Mayor Morio, seconded by Councilor Boychuk. <coughs> discussion? <coughs> Councilor Medwood. Yeah, in reading this for the third time, <laughs> section 2361B, uh, Roman numeral 2, 4, 5, and 6, do we still need these in there if we've removed the summary conviction aspect? from the bylaw, because these are all referencing, uh, for the most part, um, like enforcement through. The, that's just referring to the act. We don't, we don't have to put those references in there. This is the portion of the act that allows us to enact this bylaw that we spell out after. Like we, we state whereas the municipal act reads as follows, that allows us to be able to create this bylaw. So we, we could remove sections of 2361B, whichever ones you want. The fact is it's still in the act. It's not like we're taking it out of the act. So it's, it's up to council if they want to refer to those or not. I understand that, but if it's not applicable to the bylaw, to be even in the bylaw is my thoughts on that one. I guess that's, you know, I guess it allows the person who is not an elected person to see 
the bylaw and to read it and know what acts are being um, uh, acted upon. Uh, Mr. Harvey. Yeah, I was just going to clarify that that was the from the provincial statutes. Yeah. Okay. For the discussion, Councilor Edwin. On page 10, section 19, um, it references um, at the bottom there, it says administrative penalties and appeals for the contraventions of this bylaw shall be administered as set out in the most current enforcement bylaw. But my <coughs> understanding is our current active bylaw does not account for unsightly properties. Therefore, if we pass this, we don't actually have a means of enforcement. No, that, that's not true. The, the, the bylaw states that enforcement will go through the enforcement bylaw and that previously the unsightly bylaw didn't have that so now we're using the enforcement bylaw as enforcement of the unsightly bylaw so so we are going through re review of the enforcement bylaw for changes for the for the next one we're going to be looking at the standards uh or sorry the structure standards bylaw and that's the changes to the enforcement bylaw but the bylaw enforcement bylaw is what we are trying to refer to, and that's the way we want to enforce the unsightly bylaw. It really allows the people getting tickets to appeal, uh, which previously they did not have the ability to. Okay. For the discussion, go ahead. But it doesn't. Cur the current enforcement bylaw speaks predominantly to parking, so it doesn't speak to unsightly. So unsightly won't be and your the what was the new one coming up the structures one. It won't be applicable until we get a third reading on that enforcement bylaw, which we have on the agenda later for our first reading. So it's a little bit like putting the cart before the horse and should we not maybe table this until that bylaw is passed so that we actually have a means of enforcing the bylaw. I I know that the current bylaw enforcement bylaw does deal specifically with parking it has sections pertaining to the parking bylaw but it does in general deal with how how an enforcement process shall go so if we if any bylaw refers to the enforcement bylaw for its enforcement we follow that process to enforce the bylaw referring to the bylaw so i di i disagree it's a the bylaw enforcement bylaw is not just the parking. It is a process to deal with enforcement. Uh, so does the current active enforcement bylaw account for any fines that may be issued through the unsightly bylaw? Does it account for that? Yes, and it allows an appeal process to go through a screener, and that screener is currently myself. The addition to the bylaw enforcement bylaw that we're going to vote to go through is that sh strictly for the the structural standards bylaw, the appeal screener will be council. For the discussion, all in favor? Oh, sorry, it's that recorded vote. Oh, recorded. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Is that you, ma'am? Yes, it was. Sorry, I should have told you that. 11.2. Resolve the bylaw number 1, 2024, being a bylaw of the town of Swanover, to set structure standards to be read a first time. Moved by Deputy Mayor Morio, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 11.3, resolve the bylaw number 2, 2024, being a bylaw of the town of Swanover to provide for an administrative penalty scheme for parking, parking and general bylaw enforcement to be read a first time. Moved by Councilor White, second by Councilor Medwood. Discussion? Councilor Medwood. Uh, this bylaw is going to come to a cow meeting for yeah. further discussion. Yeah, and this is just opening it up now. Meant to ask that in the previous one too. That one will also. Yeah, that's where it kind of starts it all. Yeah. I just wanted to confirm because I'm like, oh, maybe I better double check this. But yes, that's 
Okay. I'll save it for that. All in favor? It's carried. Eleven point four. Resolve the bylaw number three, two thousand twenty-four, being a bylaw of the town of Swanover to establish the organizational structure for the municipality we read a first time. Moved by <coughs> Councilor Medwood, seconded by Councilor Bobick. Discussion. Councilor Medwood. <coughs> Going to be discussing this one as well, and if mm -hmm. okay, so I will comment on the red marks into the cow. Okay. But. All in favor? <coughs> Sorry. It's carried. Eleven point five. Resolve the bylaw number four, two thousand twenty-four, being a bylaw of the town of Swanover to amend bylaw number thirteen, two thousand nineteen, waste collection, disposal, and recycling system. Bylaw number 13, 2016, prohibit graffiti. Bylaw number 21, 2022, animal control. Bylaw number 10, 2012, noise bylaw. Bylaw number 20, 2022, business license. And bylaw number 1, 2016, uh, rental safety standards to designate that bylaw contribution, contraventions can then be dealt with by penalty notice and where applicable to add that fines may be added to taxes be read a first time. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Bobick. Discussion, Councillor Medwood. Yes, I'd like some clarification. Are we actually opening all of these bylaws for a first reading? Yes. I like we're your answer. We're, 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 we're <laughs> opening, not to go through the uh, debate of it but just opening them I, I like your answer because I'm looking at some of the dates and they need to be reviewed and looked at I understood from one of the CAOs um, not your report but one of the responses to one of the previous ones that these were only here to say to apply to the amendment bylaw itself but not to the individuals that's correct but I do think these all need to be coming to council for a first reading because some of the dates on them are back to 2013, 2016. I think they are overdue for a review to make sure they're still current and applicable. Um, so I liked Mayor's answer that they are all open for a first reading. <laughs> they, that, that was not the intent. Uh, it was, this is a bylaw to amend uh, that we can add the fines to taxes and that we gain an appeals process for the fines. So this is something we've been wanting to do for a long time. This bylaw is strictly to amend those bylaws to add those. However, if, if that's the wish of council, we can list out the, because I believe we're at 10 right now, if we add another six, we passed nine in 2023, we would have 16 on the docket, 16 bylaws on the docket to review for 24 already. So at the next Cal, maybe we can make a list and council can prioritize that list on what they want to see first. Yeah, that, that's my error, that, you know, pertaining to what the, the reading was, but uh, yes. I do like that suggestion because some of them might be a quick review too. Yeah, exactly. We might find that they are, and we can at least bring the date more current as opposed to 2013. Um, so. Yeah, the, the intention of it is not to, dig and tear them all individually apart. No, my okay. intent would be to make sure they're still current and applicable. Further discussion? All in favor? Okay, 11.6. Resolve the Council of Indemnity Bylaw number 5, 2024, being a bylaw authorizing the payment of the remuneration the members of council be read a first time. Moved by Councilman Edward. Seconded by Dipper Mayor Morio. Discussion? Go ahead. Just to give, uh, I guess, Council a heads up when we talk about this in Cal, that there will be uh, a new proposal for the indemnity bylaw on how to, it looks at, to give Council a choice as to which options we want to proceed with forward. So we started that discussion a bit the last meeting uh, with the indemnities. Um, so when this bylaw is open, we can look at that in depth and come to uh, a consensus on that. Great. Okay, Councilor Bobby. So I'm under the impression this is 
this vote will be on opening the bylaw so the discussion can be concurred further. Yeah, if a member of, if a member of council has uh, wants to make an amendment to it, if it if, you know, then we look at that and and uh, move forward from there. So an amendment can't be made before we have first reading. That's correct. Mm -hmm. We have to open the bylaw. All right, for the discussion, all in favor? It's carried. Uh, nothing in camera, so we'll <coughs> the privilege. Sorry. And uh, we'll go with Councilman Edwin. Well, during my break, uh, RMA Mountain, they posted their strategic plan and their annual update, which I thought was wonderful. Uh, very. Uh, Short, sweet, to the point. It uh, mentioned check marks for what they had accomplished. A lot of small things that made uh, impact and a difference within their municipality. And I personally, for myself and my business, always set goals for 2024, and I did the same as a counselor. So that is one of my goals: is actually to see us making progress on our strategic plan and the decisions we make are based on fulfilling those check boxes, those actions, those goals, and to be able to do the same and provide an annual update to our ratepayers as to how our progress is going and how we are achieving those strategic goals. So I have a lot of discussion points that are outstanding for cow agendas that I would love to see on the cow agenda because I think they would help us to achieve some of those check boxes. So small actions often make big differences. So little things is all it takes. Okay, Councilor White. Just a, a couple of general ones. Uh, I had the pleasure of uh, being in there, the uh, Richardson pool today, and it was clean, it was tidy, the staff were exemplary, helpful, it was full. It was too bad we couldn't get more open. I appreciate why it can't be, but. Uh, it's a good experience for me to be there, and I want to please thank your staff on, on behalf of us. I thought that was a pretty nice day for the children. <coughs> a Merry Christmas to our uh, peers, our friends in the community who celebrate the Julian calendar for Christmas, and uh, Happy New Year to the rest of the rest of us. I would like somewhere in writing from uh, your worship, or Mr. Poole, I don't know if it's appropriate to say, the status of our, our thoughts about naming some streets. Where are we? Uh, long ago, years ago, we committed to uh, ex-Mayor McKenzie and Dick Walker naming some streets. I know the streets haven't been built or some place to go, but I don't see any reason why we can't get these two gentlemen in. Well, we can't get one of these gentlemen in and just take a picture before they leave us. And if we have other names that are worthy, but I, I need something in writing. I need a timeline because uh, we're spending a lot of time not going for, forward with that. Uh, and also, I'm sure, I know you're working on it, I've been trying to work too, but somehow uh, we need to go to Whiskey Sip and the Sabbath to I don't know how you get that timeline, sir. I don't know how you do that, because I've been trying on my own privately to go to their communities to talk about economic development, to talk about crime, to talk about just getting along and uh, establishing something, some better, we have a very good relationship, improving on our relationship. That's it for me. Thank you. Councilor okay. uh, Bob. Thank you, Your Worship. Just uh, with the new fire board being formed, there we have a fire chief and staff that worked there for many years with the Donnecton River. Is there any consensus in sending thank yous or something? Because they actually don't work for us anymore. They work for the fire board, but at the same time, they worked for us for a lot of years. And I don't know if there's what thoughts of council are or what should be done, but I do think there should be something on behalf of the town of Toronto River that they provided that service Excellent. and still do, but I mean at the same time they do work for a different whole community. Yeah. So just a thought. Uh, when uh, Councilor White spoke of the name to be put on the roads, it brought to my mind Mr. Atkinson that passed away here and uh, was one of the community pillars. I would like Council to think of something. I kind of been driving around town same thing, I'd like to see a name, and not my personal opinion, or what, on a road or something, or maybe we could put it at the arena or something, but I do think this man did, he knew every child that was in Swan River and sold everybody skates for 50 years, so I, I really do think that uh, we should uh, somehow, there is these people that we will be going missing that should be uh, honored in our community, so if we all put our heads together, I'm sure something will come up. So. 
just to mention the justice meeting there a little bit here, I was impressed with the answer I got. It's probably the best answer I've got so far. Uh, it still wasn't an answer, but it wasn't that there is a problem in the billing of the RCMP, or they know there is, I shouldn't use the word problem, but there is issues. So just to maybe explain that, so if anybody's listening to the meeting, the question is that the rural municipalities theoretically are supposedly on the outside of us do not pay for police protection, but it's really they do. They pay income tax, they pay for provincial tax, so that's what pays the RCMP. The question is, is the ratepayers of the town of Swan River paying twice if we pay a service levy for the RCMP plus we pay income tax? So that's the question that's led to this some of this in the meeting. The answer hopefully will come in the near future. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Boychuk. Right, right. Rest your voice. Okay. Uh, Deputy Mayor Morgan. Uh, just two things. Uh, first one is Happy New Year's to uh, all the council staff and uh, repairs and everybody in the valley. And lastly, I just want to thank council for putting their trust in me again for going forward for another year as uh, deputy mayor. Um, go from there. So it's appreciative and I'll do my best and uh, in the absence of his worship, I will uh, do the best I can um, in maintaining the operations of the, the town along with the administration. So thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs> um, not really much for myself, uh, just the comment about the First Nations and uh, I had uh, a sidebar chat with one of the administrators from Muskie and we are in the process of trying to arrange a meeting uh, with them on some other items as well. Uh, the chief will make the decision as far as when we can meet with them. Uh, Sapatoya Cree Nation, I mentioned in our last uh, uh, meeting that I had the meeting with him and and he is willing to meet with us but we have some other things that he wants us to uh, to deal with first prior to that meeting so um, they will let us know when when they're ready for us so we, uh, we I am nudging them and I am I, I chat with at least one of them uh, every two weeks so uh, they're both I think gone right now uh, to Ottawa so they uh, they're busy, very busy people too but we will get that time, trust me. We want to give uh, Sapatoyak their, their gift uh, at some point in time, but um, it will happen when the right time happens, I guess. We're on, on their time too, so. Uh, so nothing else really for myself, uh, other than wishing everybody a, a happy new year, and, and, uh, and again, to all our staff and uh, at the front lines and, and uh, our administration as well. Um, Director Clausen. Thanks, I have a, just a couple small things. Um, Happy New Year to Council Administration and Residents. You all beat me to it though. Um, our outdoor ice at the rink um, is not open yet. So we've been getting lots of phone calls from residents because lots of people do have some open in their backyards and stuff. Ours is not yet. We, we need snow. We gotta pack it in there. We have to make a base. Some of the outdoor rinks have liners and we don't. So fingers crossed we get some snow here so that we can get those open. But you know, if you're talking to anybody and they're asking, that's why. We need snow and we need colder temperatures. Um, also, um, <coughs> Councillor Bobick was talking about Mr. Atkinson and um, you know our condolences from the rec department to his family for sure. It's a huge impact in recreation in Swan River. And we've been thinking about um, what can we do too, and, and ball diamonds came to mind. So just throw it on the table for further discussion. Um, that's all I have, thanks. Okay, uh, CFO Benita. Thank you, report. Okay, thank you. Uh, CEO Poole. Uh, yeah, three things. Uh, first, a recognition piece for the fire department is being in the works, so I like the idea including all firefighters, we can make something a little more special. Good idea. 
the strat plan has been with the local printing company. We are hoping to get that in council's hands prior to next Tuesday's budget meeting. So that's been with them for some time now. And then the third uh, is the street naming policy. So we, we are doing a review on that. We went through that a few years ago. Uh, it's, you know, the, the recommendation from administration is that we do have a policy. Because once this happens, we've seen it in the past where how do you say someone doesn't deserve it? So everyone's name comes in, all of a sudden we're naming 15 streets. So it's not a bad thing. It's just that we couldn't pass a policy at that time. We could not get agreement. So we got left on the back burner and stayed there. So we will bring it back forward. And I have confidence this council can smash out a policy for recognition slash street naming. So we'll expect that in the future, Cal. Awesome. Um, Dr. Harvey. Uh, just members privilege if you can if you can uh, speak okay uh, yeah just want to thank all the public work staff for all they've done and had a good Christmas and a good New Year's and looking forward to working with you in the new year awesome okay thank you and with that 17 resolve this regular meeting of council now be adjourned at 7 48 p.m. moved by Councillor Medwood seconded by Councillor Bobbick all in favor? It's carried. We're adjourned. Thank you very much.